Today, I've got 36 kettlebell movements on the menu for chest, biceps, back, core, and plenty more. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by my friends at Chubby's Shorts. Their tagline is, the weekend has arrived. And I gotta be honest, it does always feel a little bit like a weekend when I'm wearing my favorite five and a half inch training shorts because they have the comfort of something that you can throw on and you just forget all about. With the built-in liner, I get zero tugging, zero chafing, and zero adjusting when I've got the four-way stretch that Chubby's has going on. They're super soft, but always supportive and I like take these things through every single movement imaginable from cleans, Olympic lifts, squats, lunges, double unders, biking, and more. And let's not forget to mention that Chubby's come in the best color combos, all with built-in compression liners. Make sure you visit chubbies.team forward slash Marcus Philly. You're gonna find your favorite new shorts in a variety of colors and inseam lengths. Again, I use the five and a half inch if you're looking to purchase what I've got. Make sure you use code MARCUS15 to get your 15% off on your first purchase. Recently, I had the chance to connect with and pair up with another coach in the fitness world who has become well known for his kettlebell training. You can catch him on all the social media platforms under the handle Every Goddamn Dre. That's right. Dre has been in the fitness space for close to a decade, and prior to that, had a successful career playing college football. He is a wealth of movement knowledge and has a very unique approach to exploring movement with kettlebells. Without further ado, let's dive into things with six variations of swings. The swing is the foundation of so much in kettlebell training. We're gonna start with number one, the Russian swing. You cannot start kettlebell training without this movement. Focus on the hip hinge, keep your knees soft, but try not to bend them too much. Your hands and the kettlebell should be as close to your crotch as possible. Swing number two, the swing high pull. Building off a basic swing, you can add in a high pull. This is different than the American swing, and the focus is on pulling the bell with the upper back. The bell should track close to your body and bending the elbows after you extend your hips helps with this. Swing number three, split stance swing. Unilateral bias to your swings is a great way to work on balance and rotation. Take a split stance and keep most of your weight on the forward leg. Think about 80% of your weight forward. Swing with the arm opposite to the leg that is in front. Swing number four, alternating single arm swings. If you wanna add a little bit more coordination to the split stance swing, you can try alternating. Kettlebell training gets very exciting and fun after the foundations are built, since you can begin to incorporate more dynamic movements just like this. Notice that this alternating variation is just a split stance swing from right to left and back. Swing number five, single arm side swing. Side swing variations bring a new plane of movement and motion into your swings. You're gonna have to rotate your body for this swing to work. Start just below the knee on the opposite side of your body and finish with the kettlebell at shoulder height after you rotate your upper body about 90 degrees. Swing number six, dual kettlebell swing. Admittedly, Dre hates dual swings. He can't stand the clacking but a dual swing can help you set up and learn how to get two kettlebells into the rack position well for weighted squats and presses. Adopt a slightly wider stance, keep your shoulders back more than you would with just two hands on the same bell. Okay, next up, come train core with us. Core variation number one, Turkish sit-up. This movement brings together abdominal and shoulder training in a big way. Use the kettlebell weight to get your momentum up. Press it slightly forward and away from your chest to get enough leverage to sit up tall. This is a great tool to help train your serratus muscle, which is what wraps around underneath your arm by your ribs. Core move number two, straddle Turkish sit-up. Adjusting your leg position in this exercise is gonna hit the abs and the hip flexors slightly differently. The wider leg position will allow you to get more upright at the end of the sit-up and will let you to reach up further with your shoulder. Core move number three, the kettlebell dead bug. This is another great move to coordinate the shoulders and the abdominals together. Start slow, don't rush. The coordination of the shoulders and the legs moving in opposite directions is a bit tricky. Make sure you don't let your back come off the floor in this movement, press it into the ground. Core move number four, pike leg lift over. This core variation will really challenge your quads and hip flexors in addition to your abs. 
Lean further back to make it easier and lean further forward to challenge yourself that much more. Core move number five, the kettlebell L crunch. This movement has a very short range of motion and combines an isometric contraction of the hip flexors that makes it quite demanding. Think about pushing the kettlebell up as high as you can on every rep. Core move number six, tall kneeling hip to halo. Sometimes core work looks different than sit-ups and planks. This movement is great for shoulder training, but also is a nice rotational core drill. With each repetition, rotate your torso 90 degrees and get the kettlebell to come as close to your hip as you can. Hey Marcus and Drake, how do I train my chest with kettlebells? We got you covered. Chest move number one, kettlebell deficit push-up. The push-up is a classic chest builder, and when you add in the deficit in this way, you'll get a great stretch across the chest. I like this hand position. It allows us to create the deficit without having to rely on using the handles for our grip. It can be a bit more stable than holding the handles for those of you who are using lighter kettlebells. Chest move number two, waiters press single arm bench press. This uses a similar hand position as the last time, but flips us over into a more conventional chest press position. Try doing some single arm benching with the waiters grip like this for unilateral strength balance. You may even find that you have to stabilize more with your core when pressing with one arm. Chest move number three, 90-90 legs, alternating kettlebell floor press. The floor is a great place to do chest pressing exercises, especially with kettlebells. The range of motion is a little shorter than a bench, but the position of the kettlebell on the wrist keeps the chest under a lot of tension despite the shortened range of motion. Raise the legs up into this position and drive the low back into the floor to add in some core work while you're training your chest. Chest move number four, kneeling low to high chest fly. This isn't as ideal as using a cable machine, but it's a great fly variation to those of us who just have kettlebells and no bench. Be sure you bring the bell up and across your midline. Actively squeeze the pec at the top of the movement. Chest move number five, single arm glute bridge chest press. The glute bridge chest press is a terrific combination of posterior chain and chest. Squeeze your glutes, raise your hips high, and make a stable pressing surface for yourself. Chest move number six, straight leg glute bridge single arm bench press. This is a subtle variation on the last exercise. This is going to shift the posterior leg focus to the hamstrings a bit more than the glutes. The slight shift in body angle is also gonna mean that you're now pressing at a slight incline compared to the last press. Who doesn't love a sick bicep pump? Next up, kettlebell bicep moves for any day. Bicep move number one, kneeling horn curl. The horn grip hand position will give you one of the most secure grips to really isolate and focus on the biceps. Adopt this kneeling position or standing up tall. In either position, this curl variation and hand grip helps target the brachialis muscle. Bicep move number two, hammer grip preacher curls. The hammer grip is when you flip the kettlebell over and grab the horns like this. It pulls the kettlebell forward, forcing your forearms to work a little bit harder. Drive your elbows into your knees and create a very strict curl position. Bicep move number three, kneeling crush grip curl. The crush grip variation adds a unique chest isometric contraction to the curl. It isn't the most secure grip and therefore might not be the best option for a direct bicep blast. But if you're looking for something that combines a bit more of the upper body, chest, shoulder, and arms, this is the one. Actively squeeze the bell as you move through this range of motion. Bicep move number four, kneeling gunslinger curl. The gunslinger grip will light up the forearms more than some of the other grip variations. You wanna go lighter on this than most of the other variations that we've shown so far. Bicep move number five, kneeling top-down alternating curl. Alternating arm exercises usually aren't the best for keeping great tension on the muscles, but this one absolutely is. The top of the contraction is really peak tension on the bicep, and it's where you have to hold isometrically during this exercise. Again, consider a lighter bell so that you have maximum control. Bicep move number six, split stance single arm curl. Variations to your lower body position can not only change how the rest of your body has to stabilize during an exercise, but changes the lines of tension and force on the exercise or muscle groups. So consider a split stance when you're doing curls and find some length of stance that resembles a lunge for you. Hey, planks are often thought of as a beginner core movement, but 
try mixing in some of these kettlebell variations to build more difficulty if you need it. Next up, kettlebell plank challenges. Plank number one, the quadruped plank kettlebell pull through. Quadruped plank is one of my favorite variations for getting the body prepared for training. The all fours position with a kettlebell pull through is a great way to connect right side to left side and vice versa, both sides of the body so that you're ready for training. Attempt to keep your hips level throughout this movement as much as possible. Plank number two, contralateral plank. Cross body exercises like this demand a lot of balance and coordination and challenge your rotational strength. Start with just raising one leg or one arm before trying to raise both at the same time. Plank number three, star plank. This plank variation brings together hip, core, and shoulder strength and stability. Focus on keeping the hips elevated as high as you can by pushing into the ground with the lower leg. Plank number four, kettlebell side plank walkover. A variation on the star plank that you just saw is the side plank walkover, and it will train both the inside and the outside of your legs. Take small and slow steps. Plank number five, the plank pull through snatch. Now, if you've mastered the star plank, and the side plank walkover, you can add some dynamic movement to the exercise with this plank pull through snatch. Follow the kettlebell with your eyes. It will help with balance and stability. Plank number six, under switch kettlebell snatch. This plank variation combines upper body strength and mobility. Definitely use a very light kettlebell for this and focus on the stretch that you will feel on the side of the body that has the hand on the floor. Hey, a strong muscular back is the cornerstone to a great physique and a healthy upper body. So next up, six ways to target the back with kettlebells. Back move number one, chainsaw row. The base of this row is a long split stance position. It forces you to build a strong foundation with your legs and hip and offers some really nice range of motion for your row. A little upper body rotation is fine in this movement, just don't exaggerate it. Back move number two, Split stance alternating single arm row. Add in a little coordination with this more dynamic version of the chainsaw or split stance row. Start off slow and don't rush your transitions. Make sure your feet are in a good position before you pull. Back movement number three, gorilla top down row. The gorilla row position demands a lot from your lower back and hamstrings just to maintain your posture. Now by holding the kettlebells at the top of the range of motion, you have to work that much harder on the low back and the hamstrings. There's really no break here since your resting position is really just a full posterior chain contraction with the bells at the top. Back move number four, split stance rotational row. Adding in rotation when you row, if done purposefully and with control, introduces a whole lot of muscles that you might otherwise miss with conventional back training. Think about rotating the shoulder back as opposed to just rotating the elbow back. Back move number five, ballistic row. This is a shorter range of motion row and it's better performed at higher reps. I love it for hand-eye coordination and something fun at the beginning of a training session to prepare for more intense back work to come. Back movement number six, single arm row to split stance RDL. Don't forget that combining movement patterns into complexes like this is a great way to bring other body parts into your back training. Make sure that you complete each movement fully before starting to transition to the next. Hey, I hope you enjoyed these movement pattern kettlebell variations today. Jump on down to the description below, grab the workout template that I have written for you there. What you're gonna be able to do with that is plug in all the movements that you saw today that you really liked, and you're gonna be able to create a workout that'll hit your full body in less than 30 minutes. Enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.